Okay, well, welcome everybody to the second in our series of um, interviews with players from Central Coast Mariners. Um, I'm delighted to say that this evening we have joining us for a quick chat, um, Jacob Farrell, one of our up and coming um, stars from our Youth Academy. And uh, we're very grateful to you, um, Jacob, for giving up your time um, to join us this evening and have a chat with us as fans. And uh, as I say, we, we promise to make this um, painless for you and hopefully a reasonably enjoyable process. So welcome. Thank you. Um, I think it would be remiss of me not to, to start this um, chat off by um, making note of the fact that you are, in fact, the first official supporters club member to play for Central Coast Mariners. And um, we're absolutely overjoyed about that as a group. Um, we've been together for a number of years now and trying to push the, 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 the fan engagement side of things. And uh, to see one of our own members um, ascend to first team football is, is quite something. So, um, you know, we're really grateful that you've done that and um, really pleased to see, um, you know, that you've made that progression up from the, the youth league space. So um, thank you for um, promoting the OSC in that manner. Yeah, no worries. Thanks for that. I think, um, yeah, my nan signed me up a few years ago when I was younger, so I've been been a part of it ever since. Now we appreciate that, and as I say, we're we're very much our core philosophy is about engaging fans and 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 uh, the, uh, the the club, and you've enabled us to do that um, to an to an even greater degree this season. So we're really pleased about that. Um, so we've got a bunch of questions that have come from some from our members and some from our own our own uh, committee members. Um, just start off with something fairly simple. Um, as a lifelong Coastie, and as I, I assume uh, a lifelong Mariners fan, or certainly for the, the, the majority of your um, formative years, who was the um, who was your who was your playing favourite player from the team? Who, who did you think was someone who represented the Mariners, you know, well, and someone you aspired to be like as you were growing up? Um, I think that would have to be Josh Rose. You know, I've grown up playing a similar position to him, so. I've always been looking at his game to try and bring it to my own. Every um, every game I've been to, I've always been watching him. So definitely Josh Rose. I think Josh has always been one of our fan favourites, although we've been fortunate to have several good left backs down the years. I so Dean Heffernan in the early years. You might be a little bit, um, you might have been a bit young for Dean's early yeah. years, but um, certainly we've, we've been blessed with some very good left backs and, and I'm glad to see that you're continuing that tradition. Um. Thinking about your teammates currently, who 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 stood out to you, and who do you expect to see us being impressed with over the over the coming season when when things start to get back to normal? Um, you know, there's a lot of young boys coming through at the moment, so there's always them. Um, probably players like Harry Steele, you know, Max Ballard, the two midfielders, they've been really impressive in preseason and definitely um, deserve a chance in the in the first team. So probably those two, they've been really impressive for me. And, and of the senior playing group, who's impressed you the most internally? And I'm, 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 um, obviously, obviously everybody, but you know, who, who, who has stood out to you in terms of both maybe mentorship and also their ability on, on the field? Probably um, Oliver Bezenich. He's um, just such a good leader on the field and off the field. He's, he's a true professional and he's showing us young boys how to do it. So it's, it's really good to have someone like him at the club. And, and obviously, he's someone who's perhaps blazed a path for someone like yourself as well, Jacob, um, coming through, you know, on the, being a coastie and coming through the system as well. So, you know, it's um, it's something I think that, that hopefully will inspire a lot of young footballers here on the Central Coast. Yeah, definitely. That's for sure. Um, he's, players like him growing up makes you want to be, be that type of player. So hopefully it's happening for the younger generation at the moment. Yeah, well, I'd say he's, he's a great role model, certainly for, for many, many people. Um, what are your expectations personally for this season? Have you set personally, yourself any goals? Um, personally, for a team um, expectation, I think it's just to win to win the league. That's all you can hope for, right? We um, at the start of the season we set out to win it, and and that's all we can hope for. But I think we're doing really well at the moment, and if we keep on track, it's definitely possible. Yes, yeah, certainly. I think you know we. Um, yeah, we had a good season last year when I, I guess you were you know watching that from the youth youth setup and um, it's been encouraging that we've kind of picked up from where we left off last year and have, have seemed to carry on with it with them um, you know with even more purpose it would seem and certainly notwithstanding the breaks in play we're certainly sitting nicely in the table but we've got to convert those games in hand to points obviously to make that make that count um, 
who would you say is the biggest joker in the team or the best or worst roommate? Um, we, Damien Sikenis, he's a bit of a bit of a joker. He's also my roommate as well. So I've got, I've got the best of both of him and he's probably one that the boys get a good laugh out of. So probably, yeah, Damien Sikenis. It's always good to have a great roommate on, on away trips because um, it makes, it makes uh, the whole, I guess, the whole process a lot more enjoyable. Um, yeah. is, there, is there someone in the group that's, that's always late for training or always getting fined for silly things? Um, not really. I don't think there's many to think of. Maybe, um, yeah, maybe Damo as well. He's one of them. He's probably got a few as well, a few silly fines. So Damien as well. And who's got, who's got the best and worst dress sense in your opinion? Um, the best probably Kai Rolls, I think I would say, and I'm not sure the, the worst probably Damien again. <laughs> so I'm sensing a recurring thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, who would you say influenced your view of, of football, or how you maybe encouraged you to become a fan of football, or your desire to be a footballer when you were growing up? Probably my um my dad and my nan. They're ones that have um, been around it, you know, since they were kids as well. So they brought me into the game when I was younger and they've kept me going throughout my, my teenage years. So probably them. So, yeah, probably, um, yeah, nan and dad, for sure. I've had the pleasure of meeting your, your grandmother and uh, she's a wonderful lady. I've yet to have the pleasure of meeting your father, so I look forward to that in due course. Um, does your father play still, or has he, or did he play? Um, yeah, he, he has played. I don't, I'm not sure if he's at the moment, but he definitely has played in the last last year and the year before. He's been playing, so he's still going. Oh, good on him! Excellent. Um, have you got any? Oh, sorry. Is there anyone that you've played with or against this year that you were a fan of before you played them? I think you've mentioned Ollie already. So, anyone else that sticks to that comes to mind that you were a fan of before you played? Um. Yeah, probably like um, players like Wilkinson from Sydney FC. He's, he's a great player, good professional. Players like him that I've been watching, you know, since I was a kid. So it's it's unreal to be out there on the pitch with him. So players like Wilco, yeah. Yeah, it's a, he's certainly had a, a, a very good career and it's just a shame we couldn't perhaps persuade him to come back to the Mariners um, before he went back to Sydney. So that would have been something that everybody would have loved to have seen him, no doubt. Um do you have any game day superstitions or routines that you, you like to follow or are you pretty relaxed on game day? Yeah, I'm pretty relaxed. I usually just try to stick to the, the same breakfast and the same routines all day, but nothing really too too out of ordinary. You don't put your left sock on before your right sock or anything like that? No, nah, nothing <laughs> like that. No. Um, if you weren't playing football, what do you think? where do you think life might have taken you to earn a living? Probably um, in the trades, doing something like that. I wasn't really too good at school, so probably probably some sort of tradesman, I think. So, yeah. So, a, tra a tradesman could earn a decent living, of course, if they do a good yeah, job. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Right. So, who, if, you were, if you were working in the trades, who, which teammate would you, would you think you'd like to have working alongside you? Um, so probably Matty Simon, I guess. He's a hard worker. He's something that would probably carry on to the job site. So I think probably Matty Simon. I think he came from a trades background, if I'm correct. Yeah. He might have been a carpenter, I believe. Yeah, I think he did too. So yeah. Something like that before he, before he came to football. Yeah. Oh, uh, look, it's, uh, as I say, it's a good, honest living. And, and hopefully if you do, you know, do a good job, you make a good living from it. Um, I know it's probably a little bit early in your career, but have you had any unusual requests from fans as yet? Um, no, I don't. I haven't really. I haven't really been able to meet many fans yet because of you know the the COVID restrictions and stuff. So I haven't really been able to meet any. So I hope hopefully I can meet a few soon. And yeah, I might get a few then. So have you have you had a situation where you've been out and about doing your own normal business and someone's stopped you for a chat, recognising you? Um, n not yet. No, I haven't. Not nothing that I can think of. No. Well, I think that's something you're probably going to get need to get used to going forward, Jacob. So um, yeah, I might. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's probably been covered a lot in the press, but um, how, how have you guys as a group? How have you coped with the, the stop-start nature of this season due to the COVID outbreaks and postponement of games? 
um, you know, it, it must be very frustrating and, and not a lot, not a little difficult to manage, you know, like in this case of this last weekend, you, you prepped right up until the last day before the game was scheduled to play only for it to be cancelled. So has that been particularly difficult to manage or, or do you feel that the, the team's coped with it very well? Yeah, I think I think a few of the boys are getting frustrated that we haven't been able to play. It's happened a few times where we've um we've trained all week and it's been postponed last minute, so it can be frustrating. But the boys have done really well to you know come back into training, work hard, and just be patient until the next game. So I think we've coped with it pretty well. I think you mentioned to me earlier before we started the interview that um that on Friday last that you were just about to finish the session and when Monty got wind of the fact that the um the uh, game had been cancelled. He put you back out in the paddock for some more. So, um, yeah, that must yeah. have been... I, I, I suspect that was... Uh, well, I think you played a game, so perhaps not so um, not so difficult as doing another bunch of shuttle runs or whatever. Yeah, that's right. It was pretty enjoyable. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's good. Um, do you, was there a point in, in your formative years where you decided you wanted to be a footballer, a professional footballer? Was there a moment or an inspiration, perhaps watching a, a game that inspired you or... Has it always been your dream for as long as you can remember to be a footballer? Yeah, I think it's always been a dream ever since I've um, started playing. You know, it's always, once I joined the, the academy when I was younger, it was always a goal of mine. So, yeah, it's always been in the back of my mind. So, yeah. Were you surprised how quickly you, you were promoted to a full-time contract? Yeah, I was pretty pretty surprised. But, um, yeah, I thought pre-season was going really well. So, I was just really happy that the coaches believed in me and, Gave me the opportunity. Well, I think I think you'll you'll be aware that I've spoken to you on several occasions in over the, in, in the past couple of years, um, and I've always seen that you've had potential. And in fact, I, I can remember sitting down with Nick, or at the back end of last season, I think it was when when I think you'd stepped away from the game for a period, and um, I did tell I, I said to Nick how disappointed I was because it was clear, abundantly clear, from anybody on the sidelines. You had great potential as a footballer, and um, I was remark. I was I was very relieved, and I have to say, very happy to see you back at the club um, last season. Um, and um, you've proved everybody. You've proved proved all of us believers right in so far as you've really progressed, and 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 I think even more than we dare dream. So we're really really happy about that as fans, um, and uh, we hope that you can continue that development on onwards and upwards. Um, Thank you. So having said that, we're enjoying watching you play um, and you're in your early formative years. What, what aspects of your play are you focusing on personally on developing? Um, personally, probably my attacking side of the game. So like putting in more crosses and getting more assists maybe because that's, that's what um, fullbacks are coming these days. You need to get forward a lot and get, in, um, get more involved in the attack. So probably that side of the game for me. For sure. Yeah, the, the fullbacks position certainly has become a very key one um, in the modern game, and no, left back is is arguably even more difficult to find the right ingredients for to right backs. I mean, there are we have a few good left backs in the A League, and um, it, it was uh, interesting um, and encouraging to see that 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 Monty rates you extremely highly and puts you in in you know what he considers to be the best in the league as a left back. So I'm sure you won't let that praise unnecessarily go to your head because it's clear to all that watch you play your game you're a very down-to-earth character and very focused on the park um but it must be nice to receive praise from your um from your you know peers in that way um but you've obviously got to channel that correctly into your game yeah that's right it's good to have um good to have belief but then again you can't let it get to your head and you just need to keep keep working and keep trying to push as hard as you can so, yeah. Well, I'm sure. I'm sure that Monty and Serge and all the other coaching staff will, will keep you grounded. Um, not, not that I'm sure you need to be kept grounded, but it's all about you know the next game and the next performance, isn't it? And maintaining a standard. But you've certainly set the bar very high in many people's eyes, mine included. Um, and uh, so keep on doing what you're doing, and I can see you um, having a great career in the game. Um, everything going to plan. And I suppose football's, you know, you can never plan anything, especially in a foot in a sporting career. Where would you like to see yourself five years from now? Five years from now, probably the goal would be playing over in Europe. That's probably every footballer's goal to be overseas. And in five years, hopefully I could have enough games under my belt in A League to be able to 
you know, challenge over there. So definitely to play overseas. Yeah, I think um, that's obviously a fundamental dream for most players. But I think that the positive is that the A-League is becoming a good grounding for that kind of step on. And I think, you know, as long as players take their opportunities like you have um, this season and use them to their best advantage, then hopefully those things happen in due course. Um, you see a number of players go overseas and be successful, but you also see a number go overseas and come back not so successful. But I think the A-League will create an environment where players like yourself and Harry Steele and, and Max Ballard can, can really work out their game and go on to bigger and better things when they're, when they're truly ready for them. Um, is it true that some of your teammates are giving you some grief over your hairstyle? And if so, what do you plan to do about it? Yeah, I've got a bit of grief about it in the, in the past. People saying it's getting too long, gets to, gets in my eyes a bit. But um, at one point, I was gonna I was gonna wear a um, headband, but that didn't stick. And then another time, I was gonna get shaved, that didn't happen. So at the moment, it's just gonna stay. And I don't know. I guess I might have to shave it when the time's right. <laughs> well, for, for me personally, hairbands should not be allowed in professional football. But <laughs> so, no, you you carry on rocking the hairstyle. I mean, if, if Brian Grant can get away with the mullet for three seasons you keep doing what you're doing um i've got some non-football questions from our members for you as well uh, if you don't mind um have, have you got your driving license and if so who taught you to drive yeah i've got my got my license probably probably my nan she was she was teaching me to drive a lot she used to come down to games in um in sydney with me so i used to drive down there and drive back with her so probably my nan the most have you got your first car yet? Yeah, I got my first car. It's not nothing special, but it gets, it's all right. That's does the job. <laughs> well, no doubt one day we'll see you driving something very nice, Jacob. Um, when what do you, what sort of things do you like to do in your downtime when you're away from football? Um, at the moment, I've been enjoying playing golf. So playing golf is something I've been enjoying lately. So yeah, playing golf, um, just hanging out with friends and yeah, relaxing. That's good. I, I think a lot of people have you pictured as a surfer, given the hairstyle. Do you surf? Um, no, I don't. Don't surf. Never have. So, yeah, I like getting down the beach, but never got into surfing. Yeah, I'd love to be able to surf, but I'm absolutely hopeless, and I'm always <laughs> worried about there's things in there with more teeth than me. So, um, yeah. I can understand where you're coming from. Um, are you a game player? Do you do you play many um, computer games? Um, not, not really. I play, um, PlayStation a little bit, not too much though. So just PlayStation sometimes. Is that foot? Do you play football on the PlayStation? Yeah. Play FIFA, play FIFA a fair bit. That's probably the only game I really play. I enjoy, enjoy that a lot. I'm not sure yet. Have you gone on the FIFA? Are you a player option on the FIFA program yet? Um, I think so. I'm not, not too sure. I think I might be. Yeah. I think it's for some of the players they did, a, they did a, a, the club did a media release a little while ago with the, the players had to guess which players' stats were coming up on the screen, which I thought was quite funny. It's, uh, yeah. it's surprising how many, how many they got right, but also so the ones they got wrong as well. Um, of the sort of players that you've played with and played um, against, um, who would you say is, is your, is your favourite player of all time? Sorry, not, not just who you played against. But of the footballers worldwide, who would you say is your favourite player? Who's someone you think is a someone you'd like to emulate uh, over, off, overseas as well as, as domestic? Um, probably a player from Liverpool named um, James Milner. I don't know. Oh, Liverpool, he's someone. Yeah. From Man United, he's, yeah. yeah, he's um someone I like. He's got a good work ethic and plays in my position as well. So someone like him would be great to play like. So yeah. Well, you never know. One day your name might be alongside his at some point. Yeah, hopefully. Okay, well, that's all the questions I have on, on my list. Colin, do we have, have we had any more come in whilst we've been talking? Uh, no, none have come in while we've been talking. Uh, but I do have one. Um, Jacob, seen you mentioned that you might have been uh, considering shaving. Do you want to uh, join me in doing World's Greatest Shave in April? Yeah, that could be something I'd look into, definitely for a good cause. So that definitely would be something I'd be interested in. Although I'm three quarters the way there already, but um, 
<laughs> I think you'd have to start growing your hair first, Colin, wouldn't you? Yeah, I might have to. Uh, although it was only very cut at the weekend. So, um, uh, actually, I do have one more question. Um, I'm not, I'm just, I don't believe I've asked this, but I've just picked it up on my list. Uh, who's the toughest player you've played against so far in your short career? Who would you say has given you the sternest examination? Um, maybe um, the game against Wanderers, I'm not sure of his name, uh, Ogawa, I think. I was marking him. Oh, Kog Kagawa, yeah. Yeah, he was making really good, good runs in behind. It was hard to keep up with him, so he's probably the hardest so far. If we asked if we asked Harry Steele that same question, I'm pretty sure he'd say James Troisi in that same game. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, that was an excellent win, and um, you know I think uh, it's a shame that COVID interrupted the run because you know with three with three wins in the bank, you can certainly build on that momentum. So we'd be very excited to see how you guys go tomorrow night down in Sydney. Um, hopefully, a reasonable number of our fans are able to travel and get behind you guys tonight. Yeah. Um... We're really excited to get down there and hopefully the fans can come down as well and I think uh, get to the final. To see some, there's a question in the group chat. I was speaking there from Stephen, maybe. Yeah, there's Stephen, uh, Stephen Gibson asked the, uh, the question about what game you play on the PlayStation. But I think I think you answered that one in, in FIFA. Um, yeah. We do have uh, Joe's asked uh, favourite EPL team. Um, Liverpool, Liverpool supporter. So, yeah, Liverpool. these are good questions, Mark, that we might repeat with others. Um, Stephen also asked, Have you beat anyone in pinball? Um, no, I don't think I have. I don't think I've ever played pinball, so yeah, no. And that's that's all there is in the chat session, Mark. Thank you, Colin. Well, look, I think that's, um, that's covered off everything we'd like to ask you tonight. Jacob, again, we'd like to thank you for your time. Um, wish you the very best of luck tomorrow night down in Sydney. And uh, we'll have our fingers crossed that we'll be able to uh, watch you play in a FFA Cup final in the not too distant future. So thank you very much again and uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks, guys. Thanks for the chat. Thanks, Jacob. Take care. Thank you.